Hi, Mark. I'm Michael. My student number is S zero six four one zero three one, and I'm a freshman major in English. Uh, today I'm going to talk about what I learned as a prisoner in North Korea by Yuna Lee. I recently read about what the young generation of workers want in Harvard Business Review. One thing that stuck out to me was. Don't just talk about impact, but make an impact. I'm a little bit older than you, maybe much older than you, but this is exactly the same goal that I had when I was in college. I wanted to make my own impact for those who live under injustice. It's the reason that I became a documentary journalist. The reason I became a prisoner in North Korea for 140 days. It was March seventeenth, two thousand nine. It is St. Patrick's Day for all of you, but it was a day that turned my life upside down. My team and I were making a documentary about North Korea refugees living below human life in China. We were at the border. It was our last day of filming. There was no right fence or bars. Or sign to show that it is a border, but this is a place that a lot of North Korean defectors use as an inspect route. It was still winter and the river was frozen. When we were in the middle of the frozen river, we were filming about the condition of the cold weather and the environment that North Koreans had to deal with when they seek their freedom. And suddenly, one of my team members shouted, "Soldiers!" So I looked. Back, and there were two small soldiers in green uniforms with rifles chasing after us. We all ran as fast as we could. I prayed that, please don't let them shoot my head. And I was thinking that if my feet are on Chinese soil, I will be safe. And I made it to Chinese soil. Then I saw my colleague Laura Lin fall on her knees. I didn't know what to do. That. At last short moment, but I knew that I could not leave her alone there when she said, "You know, I can't feel my legs." In a flash, we were surrounded by these two Korean soldiers. They were not much bigger than us, but they were determined to take us to their army base. I begged and yelled for any kind of help, hoping that someone would show up from China. Here I was, being stubborn. Towards a trained soldier with a gun, I looked at his eyes. He was just a boy. At that moment, he raised his rifle to hit me, but I saw that he was hesitating. His eyes were shaking, and his rifle was still up in the air. So I shot it at him. Okay, okay, I will walk with you. And I got up. When we arrived at their army base, my head was spinning with this worst case. Scenarios and my colleague's statement was wasn't helping. She said we are, we are the enemy. She was right. We were the enemy, and I was supposed to be frightened too. But I kept ha- having this odd experience this time. An officer brought me his coat to keep me warm because I lost my coat on a frozen river while battling battling with one of these soldiers. I will tell you. What I mean by these odd experiences, I grew up in South Korea. To us, North Korea was always the enemy. Even before I was born, South and North have been under armistice for sixty-three years since the the end of the Korean War. And growing up in the South in the eighties and nineties, we were taught pro. Heard about North Korea, and we heard so many graphic stories, such as a little young boy being brutally killed by North Korean spies just because he said, "I don't like communists." Or I watched this cartoon series about a young South Korean boy defeating this fat big red pig, which re- represent the Co- North Korean's first leader at the time. And the and the effect of hearing this horrible story over and over is still one word in a young mind enemy, and I think at some point I dehumanized them, 
and the people of North Korea became equality with the North Korean government. Now back to my detention. Detention. It was the second day of being in cell. In a cell, I had not slept since I was out at the border. This young guard came to my cell and offered me this small boiled egg and said, "This will give you strength to keep going." Do you know what is what it is like receiving a small kindness in the enemy's hand? Whenever they were kind to me, I thought the worst case was waiting for me after the kindness. One officer noticed my nervousness. He said, "Did you think we were all these red red pigs?" Referring to the cartoon that I just showed up, show you, every day was like a physical, psychological battle. The interrogator had me sit. At a table six days a week and had me writing down about my journey, my work over and over until I wrote down the confession that I wanted to hear. After about three months of detention, the North Korean court sentenced me to twelve years in a labor camp. So I was just sitting in my room to be transferred. At that time, I re- really had nothing else to do. So I. Paid attention to these two female guards and listened to what they were talking about. Guardy was older and she studied English. She sound she seemed like she came from an affluent family. She often showed up with these colorful dresses, and Len loved to show off. And Guard B was the younger one, and she was a really good singer. She loved to sing, Sel Celine Dion's "My Heart Will Go On." Sometimes too much. She knew just how to torture me with, without knowing. Laughter. And this girl spent a lot of time in the morning to put on makeup, like you can see in any young girl's life. And they loved to watch this Chinese drama, a better quality production. I remember God B said, "I can do, no longer watch our TV shows after watching this." She got scolded for degrading her own country produced TV shows. God B had more of a free mind than God A, and she often got scolded by God <coughs> A whenever she expressed herself. One day, they invited all these female colleagues. I don't know where they came from, to where I was held, and they invited me to. They got run and asked me if one night stands really happened in the U.S. Laughter. This is a country where where young couples are not even allowed to hold hands in public. I had no idea where they had gotten this information, but they were shy and giggly even before I said anything. I think we all forgot that I was a prisoner, and it was like going back to my high school classroom again. And I learned that these girls also grew up watching a similar cartoon, but just propaganda towards South Korea and the U.S. I started to understand where these people's anger was coming from. If these girls grew up learning that we were and we are enemies, it was just natural that they would hate us, just as I feel them. But at the moment, we were all just girls who shared the same interests. <laughs> Beyond our ideologies, that separate us. I shared these stories with my boss at the at current TV at the time. After I came home, his first reaction was, "Yuna, have you heard of Stockholm syndrome?" Yes. And I clearly remember the feeling of fear and being frightened, and tension rising up between me and the interrogator when we talk about politics. There definitely was a wall that we couldn't climb over, but we were able to see each other as human beings when we talk about family, everyday life, the importance of the future for our children. It was about a month before I came home. I got really sick. Got be stopped my, by my room to say goodbye because she was leaving the detention center. 
She made sure that no one watched us, no one heard us, and quality and quietly said, "I hope you get better and go back to your family soon." It is these people, the officer who brought me his coat, the guard who offered me a boiled egg, these female guards who asked me about dating life in the U.S. They are the ones that I remember of North Korea. Humans just like us, North Koreans, and I were not. Ambassadors of all countries, but I believe that we were representing the human race. Now I'm back home and back to my life. The memory of these people had has blurred as time has passed, and I'm in this place where I read and hear about North Korea provoking the U.S. I realized how easy it is to see them as an enemy again, but I have to keep reminding myself that when I was Over there, I was able to see humanity over hatred in my in my enemy's eyes. Thank you. Applause. Thank you.